Hey, Ryan. Okay, we're going to get some started with some questions. Uh, Dash, are you going to take the lead? Yep. Hey, Ryan. Coach was uh, saying after that six in, you kind of came over and kind of stood by and kind of gave him a silent treatment a little bit, kind of looking up the scoreboard. But he wouldn't bend for you, man. He wouldn't let you go back out there. No, he, <laughs> um, I went up to him and I was, well, I was coming off the field and he was like, good job, Ryan. Everyone pick him up. And I kind of stopped and hesitated. I was like, uh -huh. I, I felt like that was one of my better hittings. I was like, I'm cruising. And he was like, well, we had you at a strict pitch count. He's like, you're not going back out there. Yeah. I was like, but I'm fine. And he's like, nope, don't care. He's like, you'll go out there next week. So I just kind of had to wear it. I stood next to him for about five minutes and didn't say a word. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was good to, you know, get in a groove and it was a nice day. So I'm glad I got to go out there and go to work. Yeah. And I know your location, you know, probably wasn't exactly where you would have liked it today, but no, you, you've gone through now three weeks now after coming back from the COVID. Just how strong do you feel? How ready do you feel now to start SEC play next weekend? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that, you know, having these three weeks and three starts helps a ton. Um, I mean, I didn't have my best fastball command today, um, but, you know, I grinded through it and, you know, I felt that my off-speed command was a lot better and my off-speed bailed me out in some points where my fastball wasn't there. So um, getting these three weeks, you know, really helped and I'm ready to go for next week against Tennessee. And what magic words did Coach Kenny tell you on that 3-0 count, man? I mean, come back and strike out the guy on three straight pitches. <laughs> Um, I mean, he just told me to, you know, give me a break and, you know, he could kind of tell that I was pressing a little bit. Mm -hmm. I could feel myself starting to press a little bit, but I just wanted to go out there and, you know, I was trying to just, you know, throw it right down the middle. But sometimes when you're a pitcher, just yeah. sometimes it just misses a little too high and a little too left. Um, but, you know, he calmed me down and said, just go right after him and throw it right where you need to. And so I just did it and, you know, back out into a groove right after that. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Okay. So next we're going to go to Jed May. Hey, Ryan, um, you know, so far this year, you've got almost 13 scoreless innings. You've got 19 strikeouts. You know, you're kind of the elder statesman on this staff a little bit. Do you kind of feel like you're growing into, I guess, that staff ace role that Emerson and Cole have had the past couple of years? And, you know, is that a role you take pride in, you know, being the top guy on the staff? Yeah, you know, Emerson and Cole, you know, those guys were unbelievable. And, you know, they set a standard for um, pitchers at our school. And, you know, ever since I got here, you know, I always envisioned myself being the guy, being the go-to guy. And, you know, I've, you know, had a great mentor in Emerson and I watched him and, you know, I felt like coming back this year that, you know, I was ready to do it and I was ready to be the guy that Emerson and Cole were. And um, that's just what I'm trying to do. And I'm just trying to go out and do my job as my Saturday starter and give our team the best chance to win. Coach Strickland said he thinks you learned a little bit from them about maybe keeping your emotions in check a little bit while, you know, still pitching without emotion. How do you think you're balancing that this year with, you know, I guess using the good side of emotion to fuel you, but not letting it get out of control? Yeah. I mean, I'm a uh, super fire and emotional guy. I mean, I wear it on my sleeve and, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that because I feel like that that's what helps me get outs in big situations, but you know, those guys were so calm and so easygoing to where you never felt like it was out of control. And that's one thing that I've worked on is I want my teammates to feel that I'm always in control and there's no way that I'm going to be out of control, that I'm always the guy and I'm going to get the out whenever we need it. And sometimes when you're that emotional guy, sometimes you can go too far one side or too far the other. And this year I'm trying to be that even guy. So my teammates have confidence in me to get that out. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So next we're going to go to Davis Baker. Uh, yeah. Ryan, how does your approach change if at all uh, when you're on a pitch count? Um, it doesn't really change a whole lot. I mean, I got two first pitch outs of the inning first pitch of the game. I got an out and I can't remember the last time that's ever happened to me. If that has, uh, it just helps me a ton get into a rhythm and you know, those guys, I mean, those guys are super aggressive and I just tried to fill up the strike zone and, you know, let them hit the ball to our field. And, you know, we got great infielders and we got a great outfield. So I was just trying to get them to, you know, hit it a little more because I threw about 70 pitches in just under four innings last week. And I was really trying to, you know, get past that this week and let my defense go to work. And, you know, I felt like the, that plan kind of, I fulfilled it. Okay, next we're going to go to Tori. Ryan, you said that emotion that you pitch with kind of makes you the pitcher that you are. Do you feel that there's times that it hinders you or not so much? Um, I don't think it ever hinders me. I think that, you know, sometimes I can get out of control and I got to get myself back in control. But, you know, I think that it's always a positive thing to wear your emotions on your sleeve because I'm always a guy that wants to get the big out, whether it's at the end of the game, uh, the first inning, or if it's in, you know, the fifth inning. Um, I'm always, I have a big belief in myself that I'm going to get that out. And, you know, I trust myself more than anybody. And, you know, I feel like that, you know, wearing your emotion on your sleeve is 
you know, more a good thing than a bad thing. And when you start to get a bit out of control like that, how do you manage, how do you make yourself rein it back in? Uh, I just, you know, take a step off the mound and I try to lock in on the, um, the batter's eye on the back and just take a couple deep breaths and hone myself back in because I know when I'm under control, I'm more effective. And um, that's just kind of what I did in that fifth inning. And Coach Kenny came out and talked to me and that certainly helped as well. But that's kind of what I'm thinking, um, you know, when I start to feel myself getting out of control. Okay, we have time for two more questions. We're going to go to William and then back to Dasher. I'm sorry I didn't get to go to you last time, Will, for a second question. That's okay. Um, yeah, Ryan, uh, you know, how does it feel having those those scouts behind the plate? You know, I'm not. I'm sure it's not the first time for you, but um, and we saw that all the time with with Emerson and Cole last year. Does it does it change your mindset at all? Does it fire you up a little bit? Maybe more nerves? Uh, you know, I'm not even. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know that there were scouts there. Um, when I pitch, I'm a very tunnel vision pitcher and coach Kenny kind of got into me a little bit for being too tunnel vision sometimes. Um, but you know, that scouts are there, you know, that's awesome. And, you know, um, it's a great honor that they're there to, you know, watch and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm out there to do my job and do my job the best that I can to give my team a chance to win. And if I do that, then everything else will take care of itself. Thanks, man. Hey, Ryan, that's showing, uh, since you've been here for as long as you have, I just kind of wonder what your take was on, on these freshmen on these team. I mean, uh, uh, you know, Corey and, and Parks today, uh, joking with Coach Trigg, it's probably not going to be the, first, the, the last time you see those guys at home runs in the same game. But seriously, you've been around a long time. Just what do you see from those two guys? How impressive have they been for you, to you? You know, a lot of freshmen, Coach Strickland talks about it too. And, you know, he always says the best thing is, you know, freshmen turn into sophomores. But, you know, those guys have grown up so quickly and they're so mature beyond their years. And I mean, you look at both of those guys and you think that they're Keegan and Michael Curry as juniors and seniors in college. I mean, the way they carry themselves is, you know, they carry themselves like professionals, and that's why they, they were so highly touted coming in. And, I mean, you look at the pitching staff, too, with Jaden and Hank and Will Pearson and Wagner. I mean, all those guys have done a tremendous job of adapting and just being ready to go whenever their number's called. And I couldn't be more proud of Parks and Corey and the rest of the freshman pitchers for stepping up and being ready when their number's called because we're going to need them a ton this year. And I'm glad that they're getting this experience and this confidence now going into conference play. That's all right.